interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following special report from ABC News. This is launch coverage of America's latest space shuttle, New Challenge in Space. Good afternoon, I'm Frank Reynolds in Washington, and we are about to witness and vicariously participate in a new challenge in space. There have been five space shuttle missions before, but they were all flown by the tried and true, and you might say venerable Columbia. But now, there is a brand new spacecraft out there on the pad, Challenger, the latest addition to America's fleet of spaceships. And down at Cape Canaveral, just itching, I know, to turn around and stare out there at the pad, is Lynn Sherb. Lynn, what we see of the weather from here looks just great. It is absolutely gorgeous here, Frank, but the problem is that it was only gorgeous at ground level up until a few hours ago. Uh, as late as last night, just before midnight, they thought that would be a no-go for Challenger because the jet stream had extremely high turbulence at an extremely high altitude, about 40,000 feet. They said conditions were unacceptable as of last night. However, that's all changed. We now know that the, the winds aloft are go. Challenger will take off despite the jet stream. So here we are along with our colleague Gene Cernan, the Apollo astronaut. Gene, it's good to be here. Lynn and uh, Frank, it is good to be here again. The count now is uh, within five minutes of launching today. Uh, we do have a, uh, a beautiful day. The winds aloft that were going to give us a problem with turbulence in the spacecraft certainly have uh, subsided. Uh, uh, we have the swing arm of the white room now is away from the spacecraft. It's on internal power she seems ready to go and uh, indeed we do have a new spacecraft Frank but we also got a new crew we've got one veteran and uh, we've got four rookie or trucks and three rookies with an awful lot of experience right Gene and just to uh, give their names and give people their faces a little bit too the commander of this mission is Paul White he's the fellow that flew in Skylab his co-pilot is Carol Bo Bobko as for the two mission specialists MS-1 as he called Dr. Story Musgrave a doctor and MS-2 Donald Peterson and of course Musgrave and Peterson are the two fellows who will launch the satellite counting, this evening, the and they will also take the spacewalk power. on Thursday. However, Frank? the fuel cells are still receiving some fuels from ground support equipment for another minute. This, of course, is the voice T of Hugh Harris, launch minutes. control. 13 seconds and this, counting. This crew, the Lynn, by the way, probably the has uh, it's close to 60 years, and about 15 years experience training, uh, not particularly for this flight, for it, but for space counting flight in up general. Coming on the three-minute point, T-minus three minutes and counting. The engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines is underway. The liquid Challenger oxygen valve a new for vehicle, of course, is a is much closed, lighter vehicle than Columbia was, so it can carry heavier payloads. T minus two minutes, That's what we're going to be seeing seconds. on this mission. Lighter the construction. Gaseous oxygen also the engines, 104% uh, thrust, much more powerful, and the heavier payload, as I mentioned. This is a uh, new spacecraft. We have upgraded engines, uh, and of course, we're putting that very valuable uh, communication satellite that NASA will use for about the next 10 years to communicate with all of its spacecraft in orbit. The fuel cells, which they're talking about now, they said they might have had a problem yesterday. Obviously, that was the corrected too. The beanie cap or gaseous oxygen vent arm carries away vapors from the oxygen tank while the tank is full on the pad. That little beanie cap actually covers the uh, fuel the tank, uh, the liquid oxygen, liquid down. hydrogen. We the see it swinging away now. The moved to their start position, and the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories. T-minus one minute, 56 seconds, and the liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed. Flight pressurization is underway. Gene and Lynn, uh, there are no ejection seats on this uh, one spacecraft minute, either. Are there? there are no ejection seats, point, and all four crewmen now, of course, are sitting right on a flight deck, uh, one right behind the other. They can all see out uh, during the launch, and of course, if they did have to abort back uh, and fly the spacecraft back to Cape Kennedy, minute, they'd, uh, seconds, they'd, they'd have to do just that, fly it back. They cannot eject the out of this spacecraft. We are now in an operational mode, no longer in a test mode. In approximately five seconds from now. T You're seeing the future, I think, of commercial spaceflight begin, uh, although we had a start last, with the last shuttle flight, I think we're really beginning to see uh, a foothold take the place at this time. The tank is at flight pressure. Coming one up on the one minute point in our countdown. Frank, this is heartbeat time at about one minute. One minute. And we're also coming routine. up on uh, the firing system for the sound suppression water system is on. Also coming up on one more hold at 31 seconds. Of course, 31 seconds is where the second the space shuttle stopped and are. did not go. That was the a heart stopper while you're talking to about it. The hydrogen uh, flowing through the engines prior to engine ignition does not accumulate. T minus 40 seconds and counting. 
We are just seconds away from switching command of the countdown to the onboard computers. T minus 30 seconds and counting. We're past it. We are go for auto sequence start. The hydraulic power units on the SRBs have started. T minus 20 seconds and counting. The first thing we'll see is the shuttle main engines T light off just 15, before T zero. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We are go for main engine ignition. Seven, six. We have main engine ignition. Four, three, two. Super down here. It has something to do with lack of aerodynamic pressure. What? 30 seconds elapsed. 30 seconds. We're already through about 600 miles an hour. She's climbing on. Throttles on all three main engines coming down to 81%. That's a planned reduction in power, but he lifted off at 104% of the rate of power. Per if anything, it looked brighter and Down felt two, stronger and than the last one. If you had to paint a picture, Down you could not have miles. painted a prettier one. Are we likely to be able to see the uh, SRB separation? One minute to uh, Frank, it's so clear here, I'm, I'm sure we can see it with our naked eye. We are broadcasting live. Main engine Central throttle Space going Center. back to 104%. Challenger is go at throttle up. Challenger, you're go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. What he's doing is that they've got to go and that the engines are performing right on specifications. So as General Abramson said, no two and a half months late. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I think NASA's to be congratulated, really, for risking embarrassment and ridicule Challenger, by Houston, making sure uh, that they had this thing right before they went Slightly depressed, There's no problem. His point was you delay now, you ensure mission safety later. 4,100 feet per second. Altitude 15 miles, downrange 14 miles. I think we will see them here uh, uh, with the naked eye. The mission is now under control of the Johnson Space Center in Austin. 5,100 feet per second. 20 miles in altitude, uh, downrange 22 nautical miles. And soon we should be able to see the separation of the solid rocket boosters pushing away. They're lightweight solid rocket boosters. And there they go. We can see them from here. Zowie. 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 Another five and a half minutes for the engines to burn. Solid rocket boosters will fall into the Atlantic Ocean about 160 miles from the Kennedy Space Center and will be retrieved there. Challenger, you have two-engine tail capability. Two-engine tail. Challenger. Portions of the boosters are reusable. In fact, there are parts from the very first shuttle flight. On this flight, parts of the booster have been reused. Of course, that's the whole idea of the shuttle, reusability. Three minutes elapsed time, velocity 6,800 feet per second, altitude 39 miles. Challenger. How does it look to you, Tony? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it really looks good. All three main engines still at 104%. Makes you wish you were along. Challengers go at three minutes, 15 seconds. Well, you'll have your chance soon well, enough. These days. Flight Director Jay Green taking a status check at all positions prior to Challenger reaching negative return point. This is a very important point in the mission because it gives them the capability to fly on two engines across the Atlantic. Must be 7,800 7, feet per second. 47 miles altitude. Challenger, your negative return. Negative, negative return, return. they, ca they, they cannot back. come back to the Cape now. Challenger no longer able to return to the Kennedy Space Center. Well, they're going to have a trip across the Atlantic, if Challenger nothing else. Huh? <laughs> miles it's going to be a quick one. Altitude of 50 nautical miles, velocity 8,700 feet per second. Well, that was so gorgeous. Let's take another look. We got lots of pictures, lots of cameras. Here's a replay of the launch. Look at that speed buildup. 
How would you like to be on that one, Lynn? I'd love it. That's where well, a lady's going next time. Your oh. chance may come. Who's the person next? Here's another view. Could not have been a clearer day. We can see it roll here. Right at this point, she rolls 90 degrees and then goes into orbit on her back. Story Musgrave is probably just looking out the window. He has absolutely no chores on the way up. Frank, I must tell you that when there was the SRB set, it was right above our booth here. I've never seen it quite so close. Really? Really? Well, here's a map now that shows us exactly where they are. They're heading out toward mid-Atlantic, heading toward the uh, coast of Africa with... Uh, only five minutes and 12 seconds of uh, time elapsed since yeah, they took right. off. Well.